I think it is true nonetheless, life is not always fair. In fact, this is kind of the whole theme of the book of Job, which we heard from this morning. Because Job was a, was a righteous man for whom everything fell apart. Not through any fault of his own. In fact, because of a, a trick being played on him by powers beyond his understanding, everything goes wrong for Job. And he goes around and tells everybody, essentially, life isn't fair, and that's not right. And he finally takes his complaint to God. And this is God's reply. Yeah, well, maybe you don't understand everything. Nope, there's more going on here than you can. Where were you, by the way, when I created the whole universe? And this is kind of the fundamental, I think, dilemma that we, we face as people of God, that, that whatever God is up to is so often beyond our ability to comprehend or understand. And God works on such time scales that within the small amount of time we are given this mortal world, we cannot possibly ever come to truly comprehend what it is we're involved in that God is up to. Life isn't fair. Jesus, one of the things we hold to be truly true about Jesus is that Jesus and God are inseparable, that we cannot tell the difference from God the Father and God the Son, that, that Jesus' whole life, every action he takes is wholly in accord with God's will. That Jesus is actually quite short human life on this earth helps us to understand sort of the longer arc of God's actions in the world. And here we have this story of Jesus and the boat on the Sea of Galilee, and he's with the disciples, and this storm arises, which not surprisingly is very much like the story that we get from the psalm today. Because Jesus is bringing the scriptures to life. That's literally his mission, to show the people of Israel and us today that these stories that are handed down to us, these, these psalms and these poems and these verses, these aren't just pretty words, but they point to the reality of God's work in the world. So this, this storm comes up just like in the psalm, and, and they're terrified just like the people in the psalm, and they stagger about like drunkards. What a great line. And they know that they are in peril. And there's God seemingly indifferent, asleep in the stern of the boat. Kind of like Job. Where were you when everything was going wrong? So they wake Jesus and they tell him, don't you care about us? Don't you care? And I imagine there's a little like eye rolling here going on with Jesus. And he says to the seas, be still. And it's still. And the winds stop and it's calm. And like in the psalm, they find their way to the harbor to which they were going. And the thing is, is that when we read about how Jesus encounters people, how he encounters them with, with love and with concern and with a desire for them to, to thrive in the way that they were created to. And then we know from our own experience in faith that when we have encountered Christ at work in the world through others, right, that we too have understood this love that God has for us. Most of us have probably had a moment in our life where like the disciples, we cried out because we were in peril. And in some way, Christ was there for us. That somehow God got us through. Even when it wasn't fair that we were suffering, God was still there and God still got us through. And the truth is, we will probably never understand this side of the pearly gates. What the meaning of everything is and all of the details of what God is up to. 
And at the same time, because of this wonderful gift of the incarnation of God in, in our own Lord Jesus, we can have confidence. We can trust that God is with us. And that God is stilling the storms that we encounter and is actually right there going through the storms with us. That we don't need to be afraid. And we don't need to be anxious. Because even the worst thing that we can imagine, the end of our own mortal lives, God promises us is not the end of us. And that nothing Nothing can stand between us and the love of God and the fulfillment of those promises. That God loves each and every one of us and cares for each of us individually and desires, just like Jesus did with everyone he encountered, that we thrive and live and to be the people we were created to be. Life isn't fair. But God's love transcends the unfairness of the world, even when we don't fully understand it. We can trust in it. We can just know that when we are in peril, and when we stagger about, and when we feel like we're about to be swamped, that Jesus is there and will stay there and will never leave. We will never be alone. Amen.